Hello and welcome back to this YouTube Stories from Reflexology UK. So today I'm going to tell you a story about me and my bike. And my bike was a huge part of Reflexology UK. And this was about 15 years ago. So it was a, it was a massive important part it played, my bike. And you'll think, whoa, what's she talking about her bike for? Well, everything you come into context with, there are no coincidences in this world. The energy around you, the things you use, the rooms you are in, the buildings you go to, they all pay a part in the bigger scheme of your bubble, your energy bubble, your world. And my bike was a huge part in my world for when I was teaching at the colleges. Now, one of the colleges was like an out center that I taught the iTech reflexology course and massage course at was um, in a magistrate's court, believe it or not. It was an old magistrate's court and it was on a Friday night I used to teach there. And my only mode of transport at that time, I was in my 30s or early, uh, late 30s, I'd say. And my only mode of transport was my bike. Because I was a single woman, I had a mortgage. I didn't have any, finan any other type of financial support apart from me. So I chose to have a mortgage on a property rather than buy a car. So it was my choice. And I liked cycling. I loved my bike to bits. Um, but that was my way of getting from one training center for teaching to another training center. And this was really before the idea of the internet. So there weren't really mobile phones then. They were just starting, these big clunky things were just starting to come up. But this story is about my bike and how important it was to me. And this was before I was married as well. So like I said, on a Friday night, I used to teach in, um, it was what used to be a magistrate's court. And I would cycle up, you know, it must've been what, 10 miles. I'd cycle 10 miles, do my teaching, then cycle back. Well, the training used to finish about 9.30. We did three hours in those days when I was teaching um, on a Friday night. And it was really, really enjoyable. It was all people that had been working all week. They loved it because they got to practice on each other. And it's so memorable. It was such a memorable experience. But the building itself, there was nothing I could do. It was a magistrate's court. It had a funny sort of energy. There was nothing I could do about the energy apart from just clearing it and making it, you know, seem like the best nurturing place I had. So sometimes we got to work with what we've got, don't we? Well, my bike, I would lock up. Um, it was, like I said, it was on a Friday night and I would then cycle back. So like 10 miles back at 9.30. By the time I'd locked up, it would be about 10 o'clock at night. So from 10 till 11, you know, that's how long it would take me to get back to where I lived at that time. But as time was moving forward, I noticed things changing around me. I noticed that the street started, you know, all the people were coming out of pubs and there was me on a Friday night cycling back home after teaching. And I didn't mind that, I loved it. But I started feeling scared. I didn't feel as safe as I had once felt. And I started seeing people coming out of pubs. I started seeing groups of people loitering on streets. And on a Friday night, that wasn't what I wanted. So me and my bike decided we'd hop on the train to get back home. So that's what I decided to do. I still decided to keep my job on a Friday night. It was one of the jobs that I did, um, you know, for teaching. So I still decided to keep it. And I'd get on my bike, get onto the train, get off, my, get off the train, get to my place of work. And that was great as well. But I wasn't really getting the exercise that I loved. Anyway, I had to do this coming back. And on a Friday night, coming back on the train, I never understood. I never understood how there were never any guards, okay? There were no conductors. You know, so I'd get the train at 10 o'clock and then I'd see groups of youths on the train coming down from London 
and they were drinking and again loitering on the trains and I didn't feel safe. It was a crazy time, absolutely crazy time and I'd had this issue, the same issue where I taught on a Friday night elsewhere. So I was, I was at my wits end really because I felt like I didn't want to buy a car. I loved my cycling but I didn't, I no longer felt safe because there were no conductors on a Friday night to make sure I was safe. You know, I was a woman by myself, traveling with my bike, putting the bike on the train and it didn't work. So whatever way I went, whether I cycled from work to home on a Friday night, um, you know, I had all the people outside loitering that I had to deal with. So because of my safety, I still chose not to get a car, um, but, there is an angel that always looks after us, doesn't it? And my bike, the story of my bike with my job as well, it's kept breaking down. It was a br pretty good bike, a couple of hundred quid I must have paid in those days for it. It was a good bike, but it kept getting punctures. It must have had 16 punctures. And my boyfriend at the time, who is my current husband, kept sorting out these punctures. It'd keep getting punctures constantly. This bike did. And it was most bizarre, the story of my bike, because, um, you know, I felt unsafe. The, ba the bike kept breaking down, which I'd never had in the whole of the history of owning bikes. It kept getting punctures. Like I said, it had 16 punctures not literally one after another, but I'd be out and about biking somewhere else and it'd get a puncture. It was always being replaced. And the funny thing was where I lived, I decided to put it around the back garden. I locked it up and one day I came down and it had disappeared. Someone had stolen my bike. And this was my mode of getting from A to B to C to D. You know, I did all my teaching by getting on my bike and cycling somewhere. I put all my stuff in panniers. I wore wet weather gear. I went, if you can think of the worst wet conditions, I was that woman cycling in all weather conditions because I had no other means. And then my current boyfriend at the time, I started confiding in him saying the situation, how I felt unsafe, my bike kept breaking down and he kept trying to mend it. So it was a vicious circle and we weren't living together or anything, but he was in the, we were in the very early stages of our relationship. So there was him with his soft top Mazda and we got this parking lot and I could drive, I'd dr driven since I was like 17, 18, but I just chose not to have a car. So one day he sat me in his car and he said, let me give you a lesson about driving. And I hadn't driven for about 10 years. So I started learning to drive in his Mazda all over again, but around a car park, you know, as you do, just to get my confidence back up. And this was a soft top. And this man, who is now my husband, said, I'm gonna loan you my car for a Friday night and you can drive yourself home. Now we weren't living together. So what happened was I didn't have my bike because it had been stolen. I chose not to buy another one because I've been through so much. And this wonderful person loaned me his car. He had two cars, loaned me his car so I could get from my teaching practice back home safely. So it was cool, you know, I really enjoyed it. And I promise you, nothing happened to the car. But years later, we were out and about, um, you know, this is, we were boyfriends at the time, we were out and about, and we walked past where I live. And this is years later. And this bike that was to do, you know, that I'd had years ago, suddenly turned up from nowhere, outside of the place where I'd lived, propped up against some railings. <laughs> And it wasn't even locked. And I thought, this is the most weirdest thing about this bike. I actually don't want the bike back because it starting to have like a negative energy, you know, and maybe the bike was telling me something about my safety. And I do believe that energies are found in things as well. So they're not just in um, environments, they're also in, it was in my bike. That bike was telling me something. It was telling me to be getting home safe. 
Okay, so that is the story of me and my bike and the old days of how I trained people. And that bike had an energy of itself. In maybe some ways, when I look back, it was protecting me because no longer was I able to feel safe by just cycling back on a Friday night home at 10 o'clock when I wanted to carry on doing my teaching on a Friday night. So have a look around your place and think about, step back from everything. Is there something that's constantly breaking or you know shutting down or whatever? What is it telling you? At that time, I didn't know that that bike was telling me something. All I knew was that bike was not meant for me from day one. So I hope this has brought you a lot of laughter. It definitely did for me when I saw my bike back, lying on the railings, waiting ready for me to obtain it again, which I didn't want it back after all of that. I'd been used to driving. And that was the start of when I started whizzing around in my car and um, the amount of cycling I used to do changed. So thank you so much for listening and having a laugh with me today about me and my journey of my bike. I hope whatever you're doing, you're having a wonderful time and I look forward to seeing you on part six next for Stories from Reflexology UK.